Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glories due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. So once again, it's another video, and I'm going to be responding to this video here that was put up by um, Elder Karatazar of GMS Vegas sit-downs and he's responding to a video that was put up by the individual you see here you know who's uh, an apologist for um, the wacky tacky Christians he himself is a wacky tacky Christian he goes by uh, the channel Disciple of Christ, which the name of the Lord, the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, is not Christ. The term Christ is actually a watered down version of the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. Now, when the angel Gabriel was sent to Joseph and Mary, the parents of the one they call Christ. The angel Gabriel was instructed by the Heavenly Father to tell Joseph and Mary what to name their firstborn child, their firstborn son. And it was not Christ. Okay? It was not Christ. In the ancient Hebrew, it was Yahawashai, which means he is the savior, he is the deliverer. He saves, okay, because when Yahweh Shai comes back this time, which we're patiently waiting for, he's going to save his people, as in the elect. Now, all the members of the elect, and this is according to Matthew 24 and 30, all the members of the elect are from the nation of Israel, are Israelites. That's who he's coming to save. So, this individual here who calls himself or his channel Disciple of Christ is already lost. Okay, because the name of the Lord is not Christ. This is why in Proverbs 30 it says, What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? Obvious this guy here on the screen cannot tell. So you put up this video bonus the dumbest lie of the hebrew israelites so he's trying to save the wacky tacky christian community and like the brother elder karatazar says he's a closet so-called white supremacist all right he has that look like he got a problem with jake you know he probably lost his girlfriend or his wife <laughs> to a uh, a so-called black man, a big, muscular-bound so-called black man with a bald head named Abdullah. <laughs> that's why. That's why he's so mad at so-called black people, you know. And then you have your your so-called white people who are just straight up racist, you know. They don't like so-called black people. It is what it is. You know. Of course, I'm being funny with it, but you know, that's his story. Okay. Anyway, let's get into the video. <clears throat> I'm start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the full elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. Now, this, uh, this Christian, this Edomite Christian, He's mad. And um, the more videos he put up, the more he's starting to reveal to me that uh, he's a white supremacist masquerading behind Christianity, which a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. And now um, he's trying to insult our intelligence by uh, making a claim that when we say that uh, the term Jewish 
means uh, pertaining to or like that uh, is not true. We're wrong. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a dumb thing to say. Um, and he's basically trying to defend the, the, the small hats, those those uh, Ashkenazis, uh, you know, those devils that's trying to continue in the lie that they're descendants of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, like case in point, when they set up the state of Israel back in 1948, to be exact, May 14th, 1948. Now, they set up something called the so-called Jew, the Ashkenazi so-called Jew. They set up something called the state of Israel, and that was supposed to be the fulfillment of Isaiah, the second chapter, which is the biggest joke on the planet Earth, because according to Isaiah, the second chapter, if we go into prophecy, all right, the book of uh, Isaiah 2, 2 and 1, now it says, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Judah and Jerusalem represents all 12 tribes, not just the Jews, but all the tribes. Okay, when you ask these so-called Jews, these Ashkenazi so-called Jews, well, who's the tribe of Zebulon? Who's the tribe of Asher? Who's the tribe of Naphtali? Who's the tribe of Issachar? They really can't tell you. Okay, but when the nation of Israel is established, the true nation of Israel is established, it's going to be all 12 tribes. Furthermore, who's the 144,000 that's set to rule right along with the Lord? All right. Anyway, let's read on. For that matter, King David prophecy in Ezekiel the uh, 36th chapter the Lord the Heavenly Father said the Heavenly Father rather he said he will set up his King David to sit on the throne King David so who's King David among the Ashkenazi so-called Jew anyway and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established now they're saying that that happened in 1948. That's why we call them the 1948. It's May 14th, 1948. But let's keep reading. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, the top of the governments, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. We don't see that with the that tiny state of Israel. All nations are not flowing unto it. You've got certain nations that want to destroy it because of its wickedness, because of its treachery, its ill dealings. Okay? Let's keep reading. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. So all the nations are supposed to come to these so-called Jews, these Ashkenazis, right? This is that they said that they fulfilled this prophecy back in 1948, May 14th, right? The state of Israel is now created. Everyone should recognize that tiny state of Israel. But the problem is there's nations that don't recognize it. For, for instance, the so-called Arabs, they detest that state of Israel. Okay. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Right? For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Now, again, uh, in this tiny state of Israel, you have individuals that are against the law. You have something called homosexuals and lesbians. Even in the Knesset, and I've done videos on this, the ruling body, the supreme law ruling body of Israel is called the Knesset. I think it means great assembly. All right, I forgot the 
Hebrew way of saying the Knesset, and I believe it means Great Assembly. Now, within that Great Assembly, which is a, a bunch of individuals that make laws for the state of Israel, you have homosexuals and lesbians lesbians within those uh, within that great assembly, which is total violation of the Heavenly Father's law. According to the Heavenly Father's law, according to the Torah, if a man is a homosexual, he is supposed to be deleted. If a woman is a homosexual, she's supposed to be deleted. Okay? So this is another example of proof that they are not the people. All right? Because if they were truly pushing God's law, according to the Torah, homosexuality and lesbianism would be banned in Israel. You have the city Tel Aviv, all right? The city in Israel known as Tel Aviv, which every year they host the biggest happy people. You know what I mean by happy people, G-A-Y parade. They host the biggest G-A-Y parade on the planet Earth every year in Tel Aviv. Again, that's a violation of Leviticus 20 and 13. What does Leviticus 20 and 13 say? If a man also lie with mankind, both of them have commit, committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Okay? In the Israeli Knesset, you have women sitting on, uh, on the ju um, judges' seats. The Bible says a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. 25% of, and I, again, I've done a video on this, 25% of the Israeli Knesset, 25% uh, of, the, of the members, the great assembly, that's what the word means, are women. Now the Bible is clear on this. The Bible says a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. Okay? So there's so many examples according to scripture, that we can bring out which proves they are not the people. They are not the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. And the other nations, outside of America, of course, the other nations, they know, especially the so-called Arabs, they know that they're not the true people. Okay? There's videos even now on YouTube where you have people from that area of the world that are saying to so-called black Americans, come back to Israel, you are the true people. And I've seen at least a couple of them. Okay? So there's uh, mountains of proof that we can bring out to prove that they're not the people. But what I'm doing is showing you an example right now within Scripture. Again, Isaiah, the second chapter, the second verse again, or rather the third verse. And many people shall go and say, Come. And come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, that means Israel, shall go forth the law. What law? The Heavenly Father's law. The same law that the Heavenly Father gave to Moses all those years ago. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. All right? And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat this, their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Now here's the part. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So why are we still having wars? If they're the people, right? If they're the people of the Bible, the true Hebrew Israelites, as it were, and they created that state, which is supposed to be a nation. The Lord is talking about the nation of Israel, not the state of Israel. But they created that state May 14th, 1948. And they're supposed to be a fulfillment of this, this prophecy here. Why is there still wars? Why are we still seeing wars? The Bible is very clear on this. Nation shall not, uh, let's read it again. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. I mean, this is concrete proof they're not the people. Why are there still wars? As a matter of fact, the very, that very day, May 14th, the very night of May 14th, a little skirmish broke out between the so-called Jews and the so-called Arabs. 
on that very day. So that was the Heavenly Father making mockery of them, saying that they are the people. Okay? No, they're not. They are Edomites. Okay? And now you got B.B. Netanyahu saying that the so-called Arabs are the Edomites. We got to destroy them so we can fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah. Uh, what is that? Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, I believe it is. Let's go there. <laughs> Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, I think it is. The latter verse. Isaiah 60. Let me type in BB Netanyahu. Let's see what comes up. BB Netanyahu and the Isaiah prophecy. Because he quoted a prophecy from Isaiah. Who's Bibi Netanyahu? Who's the Prime Minister of Israel? Okay. See, right here. This is dated October twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Netanyahu says he will fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. Hmm. Let's see what that says. So this is a uh, breaking news, right? It looks to be a um it looks to be an air uh Jordan news. Let's read some of this here. Tel Aviv the same city that hosts the uh, the pink parade. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a speech in which he re referenced a supposed prophecy from Isaiah adding to a growing list of genocidal statements he has made since the start of the conflict. Now, this is what he said. We will fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. <laughs> you shall hear yet more destruction in your land. We will bring glory to your people. We will fight together and we will win, he said, according to uh, Car Carberni. The alleged prophecy Netanyahu referred to is linked to a figure named Isaiah who would be a leader raise a banner for the nations gathered to disperse of Israel and assemble the outcasts of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And Yahweh is the one that's going to do that. Okay, not Isaiah. Yahweh is the one that's going to gather the dispersed of Israel and assemble the outcasts of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Some, Ju some, some Jewish zealots have connected this prophecy with the return of the Messiah. Yeah, well, that's what it means. Which is believed to occur with the return of Jewish exiles to Palestine. <laughs> Say what? They are eager to promote this prophecy to push for the return of Jews to Palestine as part of fulfilling God's plan. And it ain't just the Jews. It's all The, the Jews were just... The Jews consisted of the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. What about the rest of the tribes? What about the northern kingdom? This supposed prophecy has gained popularity among right-wing American Christian extremists who support Israel. And they're not the true Israelites. The interpretation and application of such prophecies can vary widely among individuals and religious groups. You see? They didn't men mention the prophecy, but I believe it was uh, uh, 
Bear with me for a minute. Let me type in what what scripture. Maybe this might be it. Huh? Let's take a look at this here. Our war against Hamas is a test for all of humanity. It is a struggle between the axis of evil of Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and the axis of freedom and progress. We are the people of the light. They are the people of darkness. And light shall triumph over darkness. Responsible for guaranteeing the future of this country. And now my role... First of all, where's this guy's beard at? Another law that they continually break. Where's his beard? In the Torah, it says a man is supposed to wear a beard on his face. All right, Leviticus 19 and 17. Again, there's so many red flags that show you that they're not the people. Leviticus 19 and 17. Or is it? Hold on. Leviticus 19 and 7. Is it? Hold on. I haven't read that in a while. Nineteen and twenty-seven, that's it. Leviticus nineteen and twenty-seven. It says Ye shall not round the corners of thy beard, neither shall thou mar the corners. I'm sorry, ye shall not round the corners of your heads. It's been a while since I've read this scripture. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. That's, that means get an edge up, a line up. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Let's read that in the NLT. Do not trim off the hair on your temples. Or trim your beards, which you can trim your beard and shave off the corners of your beard, meaning shave off your beard. It's also written in Leviticus 21 and 5 as well. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in the flesh. There's an example where um, the servants of King David. Uh, were mocked, I believe it was by the Ammonites, and half their beards were sh shaved off. And King Ta uh, King David told them to tarry in the city until their beards were fully grown. It shows you how serious it is right here. Here's the account right here. 2 Samuel 10 and 3. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun, their lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? David, David is talking about his king David. That he hath sent comforters unto thee? Have not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut, a, cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. So he, humili he humiliated them. Now listen to what King David says to the men who were humiliated by Hanun, right? When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. All right? So a, a man should be ashamed when when he doesn't have a beard on his face. That should that that should be shameful to a man. Now this character here, he has no beard on his face, yet he's not ashamed. Talking about they're the people of light. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're the people of light, all right. He sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry, in other words, wait at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. See, let's read that in the NLT. It, that right there is your example which shows you 
that a man ought to be ashamed if he doesn't have a beard on his face. Second Samuel 10 and 5. When David heard what had happened, he sent messengers to tell the men, stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, until your beards grow out, and then come back. For they felt deep shame because of their appearance, which they can, the garment was cut. Yeah, okay, you can replace the garment. You can get another garment, but your beard? Now that's the whole nother, as they say, a whole nother kettle of fish, all right? To borrow that saying. Because it takes a while for your beard to grow back. Okay, you can always get another garment, but your beard? And they probably had the nice, big, long beards, bushy beard. So, so they probably had to wait, hell, maybe a month, maybe a couple of months at, uh, in Jericho until their beards were grown. And then they could return. They could return to the, the service of King David. In other words, King David, and it wasn't of their doing, David's servants. It was done to them. It was, it was circumstances beyond their control, and yet David said, no, nah, don't come around us until your beard is fully grown. That's basically what King David said. King David wasn't going to have no man in his service <coughs> with no beard on his face, at least half his face. Okay? So, <coughs> all of that was said to show you the importance of a man having a beard on his face, and yet this character over here, talking about they're the people of light. I'll say that again. We will fully investigate what had happened at our southern border, the border with Gaza. Everybody will. And he's not just an ordinary citizen over there. He's the prime minister. He's supposed to be an example for that state. And he has no beard on his face. And yet we just read in the scripture, in the Torah, how important it is for a man to have a beard on his face. You know, this reminds me of one scripture, man. Uh, Psalm 50 and 16, the book of Psalms 50 and 16. Talking about they're the people of light. Yeah, sure they are. But unto the wicked, that's who they really are, the Edomites. The Edomites are known as the wicked, Malachi 1 and 4. It says, but unto the wicked, the heavenly father saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Right, an example of the heavenly father's statutes is the book of Isaiah. The Bible is also known as the book of the law. Isaiah is one of the Lord's statutes, right? So why is B.B. Netanyahu quoting Isaiah? Why is he quoting Isaiah, huh? What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction. Now, I just read to you in Leviticus 19 and 27, they're not supposed to shave the corners of their beard. They're not supposed to shave their beard, period. Yet we see this character with, with no beard on his face. And he's the prime minister. He's the leader of the state. There you go. See and thou hatest instruction. There's, there's exhibit A right there. See and thou hatest instruction. And we just read how important it is for a man to have a beard on his face. Now, you think King David, the true King David... You think he would appear like this? <laughs> the same King David that told his servants, right? Look, you stay in Jericho until you grow your beards. Don't even come around here without with no... And, and it was beyond their circumstances. It was They were violated, those men, by having their, half their beard shaved off. Yet King David told them, look, no, you wait in Jericho till your beards grow back, then you can come back. So you honestly think that King David would appear like this? They are not the people, people. They are not the people. They're perpetrating a the fraud, these Ashkenazi so-called Jews. Let's keep reading, man. Seeing, though, seeing thou hatest instruction, and we clearly see this. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. See? When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. And they, pretty much they stole that land like they steal everything else okay when thou sawest a thief thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers 
Thou give us, this is what they do. Thou give us thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. Yeah, calling themselves Jewish. Thy tongue frame, is, frame of deceit. They are the people of deceit. And indeed, they stole the land of Israel. And the Heavenly Father is pretty upset with them for that. Let's read it. This is the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, beginning at the second verse. Well, let's start the first verse. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord, ye governments of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, his name is Yahweh, because the enemy have said against you, aha. Now, who are our enemies? You can go in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, it gives you a list of our enemies. Number one is the tabernacles of Edom. And that's who these people are. They're the Edomites. These, 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 these people right here. They're of the tribe of Amalek. Amalek is one of the tribes of Esau, the Edomites. That's who they are. Okay? And they are enemies. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy have said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Right, the land of Israel. They stole the land from us. Now it's in their possession, and they're boasting about it. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Power, his name is Yahweh, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, right, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. It's talking about the true Israelites. That's what we have become. All right, possession unto the heathen. In this case, we're a possession unto the Edomites through uh, contracts like the birth certificates. The Edomites own us, the top banking families, which are indeed Edomites, so-called Jews. We're talking about the Rothschilds. And by the way, that tiny state of Israel is really a Rothschild state. It was created by the Rothschilds. Okay? It's not the, not the nation of Israel that the Bible speaks about. Complete with Yahweh Shai ruling. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is supposed to be on the planet Earth, and by default, that's the kingdom of Israel. Complete with Yahweh Shai ruling, and then right underneath him, King David sitting on the throne. That ain't what the tiny state of Israel is, that creation state. It's a Rothschild state. That's really what it is. Okay? Let's keep reading. The fourth verse, therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and valley and to the valleys and to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken. Another example with the kibbutz. Now, when the true nation of Israel comes back to Israel, pursuant to Isaiah 14 and 1, you wouldn't need no kibbutz. The, 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 uh, the, uh, the land will, uh, will, f will flourish naturally, organically. During the kibbutz, they had to bring in trees in there just to beautify the land because the land was pretty much like a desert. All you got to do is read about the kibbutz. Okay? So that's another example. Uh, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about, therefore thus saith the Lord, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. The Idumians were Edomites, Esau. These people right here, Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. There you go. That's exactly what they've done. And a great example of that is... Uh, the Balfour Declaration. All you got to do is read the Balfour Declaration. Okay? That's a great example of that. Where Arthur Lord Balfour, an Edomite, and for all intents and purposes, a so-called Jew, Amalekite, wrote a letter to Walter Rothschild, praising Walter Rothschild on getting the land of Israel. The land, this happened back in 1917, the Balfour Declaration of 1917. And Arthur Lord Balfour, which was a, 
uh, employ an employee of the British government, you know, Britain's government, wrote a letter to Walter Rothschild praising Walter Rothschild for getting the land of Israel and that it's now going to become a national home for the so-called Jewish people. So they appointed our land into their possession because that land really belongs to us, us Israelites, beginning with the so-called Negro all the way down to the so-called Mexican. That's really our land. And that's why Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy these Edomites, these top banking families, to reduce them to slaves underneath us and then bring us back to our land, the land of Israel. And like I said, if they were the people, then Isaiah, the second chapter, would have been fulfilled a long time ago. Furthermore, the visions that um, the Apostle John saw in the book of Revelation, recorded in the book of Revelation concerning the land of Israel, that has not come to pass. We don't see the city of Jerusalem on the 12 foundations. That's in Revelation, the 21st chapter. We don't see the city of Jerusalem on 12 foundations with 12 gates, <clears throat> with the gates open, 12 pearly gates rather, with the gates open and the nations of the world bringing their riches to uh, Israel. We don't see that because they're not the people. Now, when the true Israelites are established, according to Isaiah 14 and 1, that's exactly what's going to happen. The vision that the Apostle John saw in the island of Patmos concerning Israel concerning the city of Jerusalem being built on a hill with the 12 foundations, the city being uh, having streets of pure gold, that's going to be established. And the gates of that city are going to be open so that the nations can bring in their forces, can bring in their riches into the city. That's going to happen. It's not a metaphor, okay? It's, it's an actual prophecy that is going to be fulfilled, that's going to happen. So it, it didn't happen in 1948. So they're not the people. Like I said, there, there's tons of examples we can bring out to prove that they're not the people. Let me finish read this. It says, I have, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. That's exactly what they've done. Again, a great example is the Balfour Declaration of 1917. You can go read it for yourself. With the joy of all their hearts, or with the joy of all their heart. The letter be, starts out with uh, Arthur Balfour praising Walter Rothschild for getting the land. With the joy of all their heart, like it says here, with despiteful minds to cast it out as a to cast it out for a prey. Okay. So there you go. So getting back to this clown right here. Oh, bear with me for a minute. This clown right here. Judah. Okay, this guy right here. All right. He believes that the Ashkenazis, and he's going, he kind of says it in, in this clip here, he calls them the Jews. Well, he ears not knowing scripture. Okay, so who's the big dummy? He says the dumbest lie of the Hebrew Israelites. Who's the real dummy? You are. And he looks defeated, man. Hey, this so-called white man, you go, you go, you lost your kingdom, man. You're going down, man. You don't have near as much power as you once had. That's an omen. That's a sign of your your downfall. Yahweh Shai is coming to finish you off, man. Okay. <laughs> A great example, and El Apostar did, did the video, a great example that you're going down is you've lost your woman. Your, your woman is now checking for, uh, for individuals that don't look like you. Your woman is now checking for so-called black men, in particular so-called black men. That's a sure sign that you so-called white people are going down. You've lost your power. Your women are checking for us, man. And that's probably why this guy's mad. He, he's probably mad because he lost his woman, either his wife or his girlfriend, to a big... You know, she got the BBC. You know what the BBC is. <laughs> she got the BBC from a, a big muscle-bound so-called black man named Abdullah with a bald head. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's the reality for a lot of you so-called white men. 
you losing your women to to the BBC. You know what I mean by the BBC. Okay, the big black, you know what? Okay. <laughs> That's why a lot of you are mad. You know, don't get mad, hell, get glad. Okay? <laughs> There's nothing you could do about it. It's your man manifest destiny. Your women dreams about so-called black men. You know, that sweat like when they when they sweat, they look like a Hershey candy bar. Got that rich melanin. You know? <laughs> I tell you, that's why this guy's mad. Okay, that's why he's upset. Anyway, let's move on. And that's the real term for Jew. Judah. Right. Uh, which goes back to the Hebrew Yahweh, which means the most high thanks. Or thank you, most high. Thank you, Yahweh. That's how you break it down. And you have to be from that tribe to be an actual real Jew. That's right. So anyway, um, you know, this is a bogus argument, but, you know, he's... Yeah, the ter yeah like the brother said, the term Judah in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh. Yahweh, right? Now these... The so-called Jews, which this guy thinks they're the real Jews, they can't even say the true name of the Heavenly Father. They can't say Yahweh. They'll say Hashem. Or they'll say Yehudi. That's not his true name. That's not how you pronounce it. Again, they're not the people, man. Hashem is coming. Do you know what Hashem is going to do to you, little boy? Inside joke. His name is not Hashem. Hashem is actually in the ancient Hebrew, Hasham, which means the name. He has a name. You ain't said it yet. His name is Yahweh, but they won't, they won't say it. You know why? Because they know deep down inside they're not the real people. They're, they know that they're, they're heathens, man. And Malachi 1 and 14 says, the Lord's name is dreadful among the heathen. They're heathens. They're not the true Hebrew Israelites the Bible speaks of. Nothing but Edomite rats, man. Malachi 1 and 14. But cursed be the deceiver. That's what they are. Deceivers. Which have in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts. And my name is dreadful among the heathen. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons why they won't say his name. If you ask if you ask them what is the true name of the Heavenly Father, <clears throat> they'll say Hashem. They will not say, or they may say Yehudi. They won't say Yahweh. First of all, they don't even know it. They don't even know how to pronounce the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay. So. You mean, but, you know, He's a he's a, a closet white supremacist. All right, the fact that he even wants to argue this to defend those people. All right, and you know he's getting at us basically. All right, because you know this is the uh, the claim that most uh, Hebrew Israelites. Um, yeah, this same knucklehead sitting here he even did a video where he said the curses of Deuteronomy twenty eight don't pertain to us Hebrew Israelites. So who does it pertain to? The, the, the ones you call so-called, the, the, the ones you call the Jews? So it pertains to the small headers, the 1948ers? Is that so? So why do they own everything? In the curses in Deuteronomy 28, it says that we would, matter of fact, it says that we would serve, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 right quick. We would serve the other nations for the want of all things. The so-called Jews, they're not, look, people serve them. They don't serve people. People serve them. They own every goddamn thing. Let's go through some of these curses here. And what about the yoke of iron? When was when? Man, let's go to let's go to the, the head chopper right here. You shall put a yoke of iron. What is that? Forty seven, or is it forty six? I want to know how that fits the so-called Jew. Here it is right here. Yeah, 48. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Again, the, 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 the beginning with the top banking families, which are so-called Jews, small hatters, if you will. 
right? People serve them. They're not serving people. People serve them. They don't serve people. They call the shots. They got all the money. They got the power, the top banking families, right? So reading on, it says, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, if I were to go to Google, right, and I type in yoke of iron, let's see if a, a so-called Jew pops up. There you go. You've seen I've done it in the past. Here's the scripture, right? Let's go to images. Let's see. See, there you go. Look, look, look at the image that pops up. How does that fit the so-called Jew? Yet this, this, this knucklehead right here, this knucklehead says that we do not fit. The, the so-called black Hebrew Israelites do not fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Well, Deuteronomy 28 and 48, let's read it again. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All I had to do was type in yoke of iron, which I, which you, which you, which I did. Google, yoke of iron, look at the image. That looks like a so-called black man to me. Looks like he got a yoke of iron around his neck. Maybe if we scroll down, we'll see some so-called Jews with yokes of iron around their necks. Look at that, look at that, look at that. On the slave ship, being led to the slave ship with yokes of iron around their neck. But, but according to this asshole right here, the curses of Deuteronomy 28 don't fit us. You lose, so-called white man, you lose. That's why you got that defeatist look on your face. Look at you. You look pathetic, man. Where's your beard, homeboy? You got that dirt on the top of your lip, <laughs> but no beard. Where's your beard, mate? 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 <laughs> like, like, like they say over there in England. Where's your beard, mate? You lose, man. You so-called white people, you lose. You suck on white people, oh, inside joke. You lose, man. Just accept who you are. You want to be everybody else. In the movies, you everybody. Why don't you want to be the Edomites? What's wrong with being an Edomite? Huh? You want to be everybody else, but you don't want to be Edomites. That shit is crazy. Anyway, yeah, and to end this video, he's talking about the ISH thing, which, yeah, when you look up the word ISH, Cause he's making a this guy here he's making a big deal about it matter of fact you know what let me just play it because i want to end this video but you know what i'll come back and do a a, a second part all right so with that on to the next one